I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hey everyone, welcome into the arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 126. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. How you guys doing? Uh, Carl, how you feeling now, man? Yeah. You know, a little better getting over uh, illness earlier this week. So yeah. I'm not 100%, but I'm significantly better today than I was the last three days. Good, great. good, good. Burley, how about you? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. I just... Can't wait for winter to be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for not you guys too, out here, longer, out here, right? And, yeah, not too much longer. Yeah. Yeah, not too much longer, but it can't come fast enough. Can can we start Elon? Can you do one good thing? Start giving us some flamethrowers. <laughs> but Burley, I thought you don't want to go out. You really don't care about going outside. So, like, you know, what does the winter matter? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you me guys, <laughs> I mean, out here in Japan, out here in Japan, winter is pretty much over now. For the past like five days, we've had like seventy degree weather. I mean, that's like you know twenty twenty two degrees in the in the afternoon, and then it gets back down to about fifty degrees in the evening and all. But still, I mean, yeah, it's really starting to warm up here, which means, of course, the allergy season is starting to kick in. So, you know, the flip side is, yeah, the, it gets warmer, but then you get you know, all the allergies and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, with all the, the cedar pollen that we have out here in Japan in the Tokyo area, but, uh, yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. So with, with winter in Japan over now, I think we can look at that and say, okay, you have until uh, March 11th of next year for Final <laughs> Fantasy seven rebirth to come out. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sure. All right, so we got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about uh, Octopath Traveler 2 a little bit. Uh, Sony still worried about Microsoft getting Call of Duty. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Capcom spotlight that uh, happened this week. Uh, and then, of, of course, our topic of the show, we got some big news about uh, Xbox and Starfield uh, with uh, Xbox Bethesda. Uh, so Starfield, it's, yeah, uh, had some big news we're going to talk about as well as our picks of the week and uh, the Game Pass games that are going to be uh, released uh, soon, or if not already. So, But before we get into the show, talking about the stuff that we've been playing this past week, and uh, of course, uh, all the stories, here's a brief word about where you can find the podcast in audio and video format. Before the crew discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, ad-free version in audio and video formats, will be going to Patreon after being recorded. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier 1 level of $1 per month, and get every episode including exclusive ad-free post-show content in video format when recorded, please visit patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for further details. The audio version of the podcast will be uploaded to all free podcast services, where you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android, and in the video version, will be on our YouTube channel, The Arena Productions. For the audio version, just download your favorite podcast app and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like. If that feature is available there, then spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast, where you can join and chat with the Arena Podcast community, and the podcast audio website is at thearenapodcast.podbean.com, where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. For all information regarding the podcast and our entertainment and pop culture related content, along with our blog and forums, visit the official website of The Arena Productions at www.thearenaproductions.com. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at The Arena, A M P G N P, as well as on Instagram at The arena underscore podcast now back to the show okay guys i'll go ahead and uh talk about what i've been playing uh wolong 
Fallen Dynasty. I, I played some more of that today, actually. And I got it, it, it's it's funny. It reminds me so much of Bloodborne and all the Souls games where you fight your way. You you fight like ten to twenty, you know, you know, uh, soldiers, and then you get to the main boss, the first boss battle, and just get obliterated. <laughs> and then he one shots you. Then, Not, uh, no, 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 Not one shot. I mean, I was I was in the fight for like a good 10, 15 minutes and then I okay. died. Yeah, but but still, I mean, it's just that that euphoria and the you know excitement you get that you're actually gonna defeat this thing and then you die. And that boss <laughs> says, Oh, you think you're gonna win? I'll yeah. show you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but I, heard I that don't first boss is really, really tough. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I heard somebody like took five hours to be able to defeat that thing, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I gave it a break after that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I said last week, I mean, it's beautiful, um, it's fun to play. Um, if you're into the souls type of games, you'll enjoy it, you know, uh, it's 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 fun, fun to play. So you're, I mean, the, you're going through these like really kind of narrow corridors and then you get to a particular spot and then you put a flag down where it's almost like a save point. Uh, and then, and then you keep going on. And then when you get to the boss battle area, it's a big wide field that, that you're fighting this thing in. So kind of reminds me of Bloodborne a little bit in that sense and the Souls games, but uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to play. I, I wanted to get back to the quarry. Didn't get a chance this week. Hopefully, I will next week. But anyway, so yeah, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Yeah. I'm still playing, and it's on Game Pass. So all yeah. of you Game Pass subscribers, uh, get it and uh, try it. It's it's really fun to play. So you know, Burling, Ninja, yeah. Teen Ninja taught me to not play their games long ago <laughs> when when I got Ninja Gaiden Black on the original Xbox, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I I got past that first boss. Right, he's got like yeah. nunchucks or something. He's uh -huh. like. Uh, a room, a small room. But yeah. then the second boss was like this guy riding a horse. I think he has some sort of pole arm, uh -huh. right? On a bridge. Yeah. Never beat that guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Never. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? This ain't for me. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. I even tried it again on like, you know, that game, that game has runs backwards compatible with mm -hmm. updates and it looks fantastic on, on Xbox Series X. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But man, it's, it, it's, it's, it's so it's, hard. I don't want to take the time to be good at it. Well, just it's the thing about these games. It's like you, it comes the the bosses are they they go in waves, right? It's like mm -hmm. you think you've defeated the boss, you know, his health bar goes all the way to zero, you know. It's like, you know, and then and then you think you beat it, and then there's another cutscene, and then you start up again. It's like round two. Oh you no, know? they do that. Yeah, it's like round two, and then yeah, like round yeah. two, and then like a round three. But I mean, yeah, it's crazy. There was it? there was one RPG yeah. that did that. Like uh -huh. turn-based RPG, Breath of the Wild. Sorry, Breath of Fire. <laughs> yeah. You're in Breath yeah, of Fire on a Capcom game. They yeah. did that where you kill the boss, you take his bar down, and he like faint, and then you get up and you get more life. And I was like, God, no! Like, yeah. who does yeah. this? This is not something that happens. In it's depressing. RPG. It really is. I mean, it's like you you think you've you've vanquished the foe, and it just comes right back, and, you know. And it's like, and, and then it has like a double bar, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's messed so. up. But uh, yeah, a lot of games are like that now, though. Even the Judgment games, right, Burley? You know, like the Judgment right. games, uh, the the final boss. It's like it, it's like two. Uh, I think it's like three times you have to. Yeah, it's it's it, three yeah. phases. Like I three think phases, at the yeah. end of the first phase, he literally uh, right. he gets up, and he's like dusts himself off, and rips the <laughs> shirt, and then it just goes into the fight. Just keeps going. So, yeah. 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 So it's like it, you get your money's worth, basically. But yeah. Oh. So. Okay, Burley, what have you been playing? Yeah, uh, I ended up trying the Resident Evil demo last night, mm -hmm. the Chainsaw demo. Ah, uh, okay. it, it, it is good, and I, I played it on the PS5. Visually, it looks good. It ran well, mm -hmm. uh, but it is not. It can be a longer demo. Like mm -hmm. I just did one one trek through. You can unlock the super hard, like the the really hard version, and I think mm -hmm. it gives you extra. It's like I don't care enough to do this because hmm. this is this is a game i've already played because i played the original resident evil 4 way back when and I it see. does keep it does keep it does keep faithfully to the story like it changes and adds some stuff yeah but it's not very long mm -hmm. you played the first bit with a 
with the first chapter with Leon in Resident Evil 4, you'll know where it goes. Okay. Okay. And I finished off uh, Hogwarts Legacy story. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, it was a, a very good game. I'm very happy I did pick this up. I still got a ton of side content to go to, but I'm just taking a break right now. Of that because there's so that that game there's I almost I would almost say too much you can do. now no spoilers but in Hogwarts Legacy in the story ending could there be multiple endings depending on which house you're in um I don't know really uh I know I don't have the true true ending because okay. uh you have to get your field guide you have to have it a certain percentage okay so go, if there's if there's a true true ending that mm -hmm. means that uh, there are multiple endings because you yeah. have a different one then right okay yeah yeah what yeah. percentage do you need Kevin? do you have any idea uh, i that i don't know i i haven't looked it up it doesn't tell you in the game it just says uh complete more of your field guide and go see back whatever professor your your who's in charge of your house <laughs> okay Okay. What percentage are you at? Uh, I think in the forties. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll be honest. I think yeah. I'm in like this, like sixty-seven or something. Wow. That, See, I, yeah. <laughs> cool, Carl. What about you? Uh, Hogwarts yeah. still? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't really play much. Well, I was sick. I didn't really play much of anything. Okay. With the exception of, I did randomly. I was like, you know, I was feeling really sick, and then eventually, I was like, oh, I feel slightly good enough to like play a game. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I don't really want to get into anything that I like. I've already started. So I'm like, let me just pick something different. Maybe something that I've had sitting on my Xbox, you know, installed mm -hmm. and out of right. my wheelhouse. So I booted up Deathloop. Oh, okay. And I played yeah, that okay. for like maybe like an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really cool. You know, I was impressed. Uh, you're not usually my type of game, but um, I like the presentation a lot with the story. You know, I like how your character is like, doesn't know what's going on. He's getting like, there's like words showing up like in the environment, yeah. like yeah. telling him things. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think it's really clever. And like the presentation is really nice of, of things like that. Hmm. Um, and the story seems interesting. The dynamic between him and Juliana is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I see the praise and, and I, I think it's a, it's definitely a fun sandbox, even though like, I don't even have any really cool abilities yet. I oh, just wait, wait till you get the abilities. The abilities are so fun. Uh, yeah, I think that's my maybe one complaint so far is like an hour in. I'm like, all right, like, yeah, I know maybe I need to wait a little more because that's not that long for a video game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, God, let me give me something like really different or out there. You know, I know it's probably coming very soon. I just didn't, didn't get there yet. Yeah. You know, you start with like the well, I don't know if that's how you start with everyone. Is the double jump what you start with everyone? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one you you always get the double drum. Because I had that, and I'm like, I never used it. I was like, oh, I forgot. I was looking at my stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have double drum. Okay. Yo, so trust me. That. Trust me. <laughs> when you're going for your perfect loop, where you're when you're getting all your targets, you're going to be using the double jump in all your other abilities. Like, this is, like, the, as they say, you're just going to die, die to get to farm, to get everything you need for your perfect loop. Is that where you get it? Yeah. yeah. Sounds cool. cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it's time to get into the weekly news beat. So uh, we had uh, some interesting gaming stories this week. And uh, one particularly was interesting. And it, uh, you know, it deals with uh, Japan and uh, Octopath Traveler 2. And Octopath Traveler was a huge success out here in japan as was a success out west as well but uh apparently octopath traveler 2 is not doing so well out here in japan so well, i'm gonna go ahead and uh show you the story here as i get everything uh loaded up here so uh this is uh of course from uh, games radar so uh square enix's rpg sequel only just launched uh, on the 24th of February, but game sales data has already been reported from Japan, courtesy of uh, of the game data library. 
Uh, Octopath Traveler 2 has reportedly sold just 78,000 copies across PS5, PS4, and Nintendo Switch in its first week on the market. This figure means Octopath Traveler 2 is the second weakest Team Asano game launch in Japan uh, at retail. It's, it's beaten in that category only by 2022's Live Alive remake, which sold around 71,000 copies at launch in Japan. So Live Alive only launched on the Nintendo Switch, though, where Octopath Traveler 2 is uh, available across PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, uh, one, actually, one of my one of my coworkers, she's playing it and she was telling me that uh, it's ranked number two on the Nintendo eShop here in Japan. But, uh, yeah, I, I was, uh, you know, I was surprised by these numbers. What about for you guys? Yeah, it's a little sad, I suppose. Uh, you know, you think that the Switch, there's a lot more units out there when, when Octopath launched. So they should have sold more. So, yeah, think about what's really going on. I mean, is it fatigue in this style? You know, we got it, Triangle Strategy and Live Alive. And now we got it again here. Maybe it also has something to do with the mobile game. I don't know how popular that is, but I feel like it might have been fairly popular. Um, you guys know about the Octopath Traveler mobile game? Uh, I, I've heard I of it. Here, yeah, he, so. I've heard of it, but mm -hmm. never... Yeah, it was in, and it was in Japan earlier, and then eventually came to the West. Yeah, and those games, you know, I don't think they come to the West if they aren't doing well. A lot of those games, because mm. mm. uh, there was no guarantee that that game was coming here. And uh, I tried it out, and it is very much like another Octopath. It doesn't actually feel all that different. Like there's sort of a mobilization of how it plays. Um, you know, it's yeah. sort of like sped up or like quickened in a bit. But it is very much like an, like an Octopath Traveler 1.5. So, I don't know, maybe there's a little fatigue, right? Well, I mean, and the mobile market is huge out here in Japan, too. So maybe people are, are playing that more at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, it, it, uh, Triangle Strategy, I, I saw on that list, sold a little bit better. At yeah. Long, and it went on yeah. to sell over a million copies worldwide. Yeah. yeah. So maybe there's, you know, there's a good chance... Uh, being that this is on more platforms, worldwide numbers could be better. Yeah, and and the the saturation of, of games too uh, out here in Japan. I mean, a lot of younger younger gamers out here are playing Splatoon, you know, as, as well as some of the other you know, RPG elemental games. So, uh, you know, it's uh, you know it's got a lot of competition. So, uh, yeah, Burley, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, I think it's I think it's saturation and just like people remember how long the first game was. The first game was quite a long game. So some people are like, do I really want to buy this right now and get, you know, have like an 80 plus hour game here that I do do I really want to pay full price, have this long game that I don't know if I'm gonna finish right now. We've had quite a few RPGs have launched already. Like you've had a Fire Emblem on the Switch. That mm -hmm. launched in Jan end of January, mm -hmm. and other other games. It's just like I think people are just like they're they're fatigued, and it's just like, do I really want to play this? Like I, I I have not heard much honestly when this came out. It just kind of came and went. I have not heard very many people talking about Octopath Traveler two, so I don't know if there's also maybe like a little a thing of quality mm -hmm. people were expecting more from this or well, it, does this game just do the bare minimum could you do you think it could be because octopath traveler 2 seems to completely you know veer away from the first story uh, in uh -huh. in the case that this is a different setting different characters and all so maybe that might be one of the reasons why people haven't picked it up so soon yet i don't know what do you guys think yeah well it's not new this this i anymore right Mm -hmm. There was a this like I said the style, this two D HD thing. Yeah, you know when it was this was the game that launched it, and everyone was like, "Wow, this looks amazing!" Like I really want to try this. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, maybe that's the thing is people tried it and it wasn't really for them, but they they got it because it was doing something different that they wanted to see. And the second one comes out and it's more of the same. 
and arguably equal to or better depending on you know reviews that you look at yeah. but does that make it successful not necessarily these games are you know i know niche even though it's my favorite genre of game <laughs> yeah well, well I, I don't th- i don't think it's the the whole thing this is not a number two but it's not connected really to the first one because we've had for years final fantasy and dragon quest where they're not necessarily connected you'll go from final fantasy one to two and it's di- different world different characters and all that Yeah, 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 maybe Square Enix isn't um, marketing it well. I don't really know. Uh, also, Square Enix is having its fair bit of trouble because I guess I'll bring up the uh, Fort Spoken sales were apparently also lackluster, according to Square mm-hmm. Enix. Yeah. I, they they cite uh, that reviews of Fort Spoken have been challenging. <laughs> uh, and that's one of the reasons. <laughs> At the least, right? At the right? least. Uh-huh. And they said sales were lackluster. A considerable downside risk to our fiscal year 23 earnings. Uh-huh. <laughs> how about uh, how about make a better product and it'll uh, it'll cut co- you'll get better sales and better reviews. It's a, I know it's a novel concept. Square's been having some trouble. They you know they they changed their what was it was it the CEO or who was it? The CEO just stepped down. CEO yeah yeah you know they yeah. they announced something about. The, the like NFT game or blockchain game, like still, yeah, yeah they're no, still like, doubling down into that. Oh yeah, they they yeah. they won't get rid of that. Because like in, I don't think it was related. It might have been related to the same, maybe the earnings call, whatever they were talking about for Spoken, where they mentioned he's like, oh yeah, you know, we got some games coming, like this blockchain game. But like people are like N- nobody cares. That's not a plus. Nobody's like, oh yeah, sorry, for Spoken did so well. We'll get that blockchain game instead. But all those NFTs I can get, man. Yeah, get out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> well, let or us it know. Could just be could just be that they're not on Xbox, right? Not kidding. <laughs> well, let us know in the chat or uh, in the comments uh, what you think uh, might be one of the reasons why Octopath Traveler Two is not sold well in Japan uh, uh, to this date, and uh, yeah, uh, about uh, Forspoken and the Square Enix situation in general. Uh, let us know what you think about that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy 16 isn't a major hit. They're going to be in some big trouble. Yeah, and then and then Sony will buy them out, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, well there's actually out. already the deal is on the table. I mean, I know nothing. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, this is off topic, but what do you it. think? What do you think of the news that's been floating around? It, of course, it's that. Uh, Sony is going to buy Take Two Interactive. Yeah, that's not. Oh. <laughs> they can't even, like, they, even afford that. Yeah. They they can't afford that. Yeah. They got a better chance of affording Square than Take Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could could you imagine PlayStation having, you know, uh, call or uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft Auto. Could you just imagine that? And, and then that. and then oh. you know what Sony would probably do. Sony would probably make it a buggy mess for Xbox. Oh, yeah. You know, good <laughs> Just, luck getting yeah. past the regulators, um, Sony. Exactly. After, after crying about Call of Duty, and then you're going to take away Grand Theft Auto. You're going to act like Grand Theft Auto isn't as big of a deal. Yeah. yeah, and that is our next story, guys. Of course, uh, Sony's worried that Microsoft is still worried that Microsoft will sabotage Call of Duty oh, for the yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, so this uh, story came from The Verge. So I'm going to read a little bit of it for you, and you can, uh, of course, go to the link that is below there. So Sony has laid out its concern about Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard, including a host of fears about the future of Activision's Call of Duty franchise. In new documents submitted to the UK's uh, Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, Sony says it's worried that Microsoft could raise the price of Call of Duty, make it only available on its own Xbox Game Pass subscription service and uh, even strategically or incidentally degrade the quality and performance of Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony cites a specific hypothetical situation. I I just love these, man. Just these hypothetical situations where Microsoft could release a Call of Duty game on PlayStation that has bugs and errors on the final level. Here's Sony's example in full. 
Microsoft might release a PlayStation version of Call of Duty where bugs and errors emerge only on the game's final level or after later updates. Even if such degra uh, degradations could be swiftly detected, any remedy would likely come too late, by which time the gaming community would have lost confidence in PlayStation as a go-to venue to, call, uh, to play Call of Duty. Indeed, as M uh, Modern Warfare 2 attests, Call of Duty is most often purchased in just the first few weeks of release. If it became known that the game's performance on PlayStation was worse than on Xbox, Call of Duty gamers could decide to switch to Xbox for fear of playing their favorite game at a second class or less competitive venue. Uh, I mean, this, this man, I mean, this, uh, I, 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 I still love Sony games. You know, I, I really do. I, I, I love a lot of their first party games. They're amazing games, but I mean, just how their corporate, you know, uh, people are dealing with this situation and and reacting to this potential buyout. It's it's almost like somebody on opioids that just cannot, you know, uh, cannot face reality and just blurts out a bunch of you know, uh, you know, just senseless accusations about why they need to take opioids i mean it's ridiculous i mean it, it's really is i mean it, it, if if the cma is dumb enough to actually you know side with sony on this because what they're saying that they're actually going to sabotage games i mean then the cma shouldn't exist <laughs> yeah i mean come on man your guys's thoughts Carl, I'll start with you on this one. Go for it's it. Just, this just reeks of desperation. It's that's sad. Yeah. It, there's no truth behind it. Um, I mean, it's if you if you look at the way the industry works, I mean, there there is no one regulating any of this. Yeah. So when you look at, you know, Callisto Protocol recently, um, mysteriously on Xbox, the ray trace reflections were turned off on the Xbox version <laughs> at launch. Right, but it wasn't like that on PS5. And guess who also had some people work on uh, uh, Callisto Protocol? Sony had some people work on that game, of course. <laughs> but now I'm not saying they actually did anything because that's insane. They wouldn't do that. Although maybe that's where they got the idea from. They're like, oh, we could have done that. <laughs> so I guess I think Microsoft was thinking the same thing, and they're gonna do it. I don't know if you guys know. Did you know that when you're playing Minecraft on PS5? When you get to the Ender Dragon, for for like half of a second, he turns into a picture of Phil Spencer flipping the bird, and then really? the game hard crashes. Really? No, no, no obviously not. Like <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say, no, like, come on, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> like lies, that, fake news. Like that's a that's an Xbox game a produced yeah. game on PlayStation. Minecraft Dungeons, Minecraft Legends is coming. Like. You could even look at um, Wasteland 3 came out after my, Microsoft owned that them, and they gave them extra time, so they could have thrown bugs, extra bugs in there, you know. But the game was still buggy on Xbox too. Like, guess what? Game development's hard. Okay, no, none of these game developers are throwing in bugs on specific platforms just to screw with anything. Like, yeah, and that would be like devastating for Microsoft if they were caught doing something like that. Yeah, and and the goal is to is to grow the brand of call of duty they don't want like like they don't want it to look bad for some reason on one platform they don't care you're yeah. gonna get it on game pass on, on their platform yeah. you know the one argument i was like yeah that makes sense is they said that oh they're not gonna prioritize features like haptics you know and probably the triggers on the controller and i'm like yeah they're probably not but no one else does either <laughs> so nobody cares about those features yeah, yeah. i care <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry bro okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell us you're the minority. Yeah. Tell us. I'm the minority on that. I, I will admit it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, guys, I mean, this is just, like you said, it just reeks of desperation. And, you know, just the, they're playing off the naivety of the CMA, Sony is. I mean, because the CMA, you know, and, you know, these regulators and they, they don't know much about the, the game industry. They really don't. And so Sony's just trying to play off of that, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, even Jim Ryan was, you know, I guess he was even quoted as saying that he doesn't even want, he doesn't want this, 
you know, he wants the acquisition to fail. Uh, you know, um, it's just, yeah. I mean, this this podcast is a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Yes, I'm wearing an Xbox hat today because we're talking about Starfield and our topic of the show. But I mean, you know, this is just a really bad look for Sony. It really is. There's no I mean, data to back up what they're saying. And mm -hmm. honestly, Microsoft could produce data that would say the opposite based on mm -hmm. games that are already out there. I mean, like MLB The Show and and um, what's it called? Uh, Destiny 2 Lightfall just came yeah, out. Like Lightfall. Sony owns those. Did they sabotage yeah. that? Like, why Why do they think that Microsoft's going to do it, but they're not going to do it? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing and saying anything to make the, uh, to uh, to try and get into foolish people's minds like th this. I, I, I honestly want to just say to Jim Ryan. Go listen to Jamie's crying because you just sound like that. <laughs> You're cry like this is just uh, this is just insanity. It, let's say hypothetically, my, Microsoft they get a they get Call of Duty, they get Activision Blizzard. Call the next Call of Duty comes to PlayStation, and it's worse on the PS5. People aren't going to blame the PS5. They're going to be like, well, Microsoft just bought them. What the heck? Why'd you do this, Microsoft? And Activision, I ain't gonna buy your next game on PlayStation. I ain't give you money. It's it's more of a negative to them for that to do that than it is to PlayStation. PlayStation's wanting to have their cake and eat it too, and get everything they they want with their competitors getting nothing. What and what so was it? I was just gonna say. I'm sorry, Burley. There there was a report that came out that said if if Call of Duty actually left PlayStation, you know, maybe. PlayStation would probably only lose like three percent of its market share. I mean, yeah, it, yeah I mean, it's like it, it, it wouldn't, it, it would, would not put much of a significant dent in PlayStation's profit margin. It would hurt, but it wouldn't yeah. kill them. No, that's a, that's no. that's the thing. They're just mad that they're not going to get the exclusive stuff because they had so much for those Call of Duties. They had so yeah. much exclusive stuff. Yeah, and they're mad they're not going to no. get that. Yeah. That's and exactly now the thing is they're they're mad that they're not getting the better version anymore. They're actually mad yeah. that they're getting equal versions. Yeah. 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 Because the better version obviously brings more players. Well, so, that <laughs> that know? like they got the exclusive extra betas earlier, longer betas and all this and that, the better an mm -hmm. extra map or two if you're on PlayStation, an extra thing like yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, like some of those remasters came to PlayStation, they were timed exclusives. They came to PlayStation yeah. for like six months to a year first and yeah. then came to Xbox. So it's like they got all this crazy amount of stuff and all the marketing for a lot of those Call of Duties. PlayStation was big and forefront and the Xbox logo, if it was there, was in like the little corner. Yeah, I mean, they're mad. They're mad. They're not going to get that anymore. And it's. Oh well, instead well, of you know, instead of bitching and complaining, Sony, you should be doing okay. If you can't get that with Call of Duty and that's starting to go away, I'd be looking at some of my other things and making little deals with them if you wanted to strike back. Well, I think part of it, Burley and Carl, is you know, they're still lit trying to live in the PlayStation 4 generation, okay. which which was just a, an amazingly successful run for them. Uh, and it's just, it, it, that's that era is gone now. And we have a new era and we have a new group of people in Xbox that actually really care about gamers and want to make the brand successful and make it successful everywhere and for all gamers. And that's what Sony is afraid of. So. Yeah, Sony wanted to kill the Xbox brand. They they were hoping that yeah. the PS4 gen Xbox One generation was was the, the nail in the coffin, and this next generation was was just going to be the last one for Xbox. And it turned out that it, the opposite is true that they've doubled down and they're doing better than ever. Yeah, and they're making more and bigger investments into gaming because gaming is really huge right now. It's a gigantic market. There's tons yeah. of money to be made there. Microsoft realizes this. Well, yeah, it's like the the old expression: they woke up the sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so 
yeah but anyway so yeah we will continue to uh you know uh you know keep an eye on this coverage uh i think uh in the next month or so we're supposed to be getting the the final you know the final verdict from the cma and uh you know what goes on from there but uh yeah we shall see yeah and end of april has deadlines for uk and cma so yep yep we shall see we shall see for sure okay it's time to move on so now it's uh let's get to uh let's get to capcom because uh earlier this week we had a capcom spotlight so uh i'm gonna go ahead and show you the link uh from ign you can go over there and see uh all of the uh the things that were announced uh at the uh, capcom spotlight for march of this year so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and play some of the trailers from what they showed uh, uh this trailer that i'm gonna show though does not have uh the they they showed the the, the resident evil movie uh thing so uh, that's kind of movie related but uh so uh yeah let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this so uh first up of course uh we got the resident evil for special demo so uh capcom revealed the resident evil 4 chainsaw demo which you played burly yeah. it's uh, my yeah. favorite moment is coming up soon <laughs> yep do you know what it is there it is right there yeah this trial no, this trial no time limit okay i was when i saw that i was like you shouldn't have to announce that but I'm glad you yeah. realized that your time limit demos are really, really dumb. And I hate that. So anyway, this trial <laughs> version of the game takes place at the beginning of the game as Leon first enters the iconic European village. So, uh, yeah, we got that. Uh, yeah. So anyway. But uh, yeah, anyone, if anyone's curious on how Resident Evil 4 is going to be the remake, try the demo. Yeah. That's all, 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 I, all I can say. Yeah, as Carl was saying, there is no time limit on the demo, so you can play it as many times as you want. You can download it on PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Series S, and Steam. Enjoy it as long Enjoy as it. you like. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I used to love the Resident Evil demos. Like they, they, something they always used to do demos, and you know, I, I remember, like, oh, I might play it multiple times. <laughs> There's a time limit on these things. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's it. I guess I'm done. And Thanks, then the pre-order bonuses, yeah, of course. Yeah, the attaché case and the charm handgun ammo. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff. <clears throat> so, thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. So this is uh, a little bit of the final part they showed here of uh, yeah, three four. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. We're getting Donkey Kong Country in there with the minecart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My memory of this game is so fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, Exo Primal and uh, Carl's coming to Game Pass, man. So excited oh, yeah. for that. Exo Primal release date was revealed. We got the new trailer and release date, which is coming to Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One, PlayStation Five, PS4, and Steam on July 14th. So if you have Game Pass, July 14th is the day the day to look forward to. So dinosaur yeah, think, hunting action, as well as an introduction to some of the game's characters. The trailer also uh, says that Exo Primal is an always online game with a continuous internet connection required. There will also be an open beta test with cross-platform matchmaking from March 17th through the 19th. Uh, go ahead, Carl. You were going to say something there. I think it's a good get for, for Game Pass, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, obviously, you probably know this isn't my kind of game. But it looks like a cool game. Like it looks, as far as like the way it plays, like the, it looks interesting. I, I like what's going on. Um, I think the characters look interesting. Like designs are good, you know, for them for these mech suits and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, Capcom showing some support for Xbox is, is nice. Yes, I'd like to see that. Yes, yes, yeah. This, this just looks like crazy or Earth Defense Force. <laughs> You know, uh, it, it is it is like a gonna have a battle pass, and it is a service type game. But they're not. It's not like they're they are being upfront about that, right? So, like, yeah. if you like that sort of thing, this is one of those games, and you know, here it is. Versus, you know, Suicide Squad, which we'll talk about at some point, is I think isn't what anybody expected, right? It's not meeting any expectations, and it's doing things that people don't expect from that type of game, right? Um, Right. No, th this coming to Game Pass actually 
it's like, oh, I'll actually try this now. Because I'll be honest, that this was nothing I was going to drop a hundred dollars to go right yeah. play a yeah. play. And I forgot about that game because it yeah. just they announced it like two years ago, and then it was like, okay, we haven't heard anything in in a long time on it. Yeah. Oh, you get a special metal charm if you try the beta. Yeah. It's a cross-platform matchmaking. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I mean, Custom designs skins. are really cool. All these designs for all these suits, like suits, these skins, they yeah. look great. So, like, I, I think they, they could have a winner on this, you know, if if it's a fun game and people really take to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing is, like, they're not taking it seriously because you see just random black orbs dropping a bunch of dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, okay, they're not taking it seriously. They're going into the cheese. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah. Next up, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak coming to PlayStation and Xbox this April. So, yeah. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise uh, came to Xbox and PlayStation platforms earlier this year, and now hunters can look forward to the Sunbreak expansion on April 28th. Sunbreak, which released on Switch and Steam last year, Adds two new locations, a new hub world, and a ton of new master rank monsters and weapons. Capcom also announced a new Sunbreak digital event set for April to share information about the next title update for Switch and Steam players. So what'd you guys think of uh, this announcement? I mean, it's like, yeah, okay. And we obviously, <laughs> this is already out on Switch, right? Like this isn't a new, uh, you know, expansion. We knew it existed. It's it's just more Monster Hunter. Like I got nothing against these games, like because I played the uh, World because they gave that a free away through the PS uh, Plus collection. It's just these games I can never I never get too excited because I know I'll play the first five to six hours. We don't have to grind too much, and then it gets to that point where you get to a boss where it's like, okay, now I got to grind my weapon from plus plus four to yeah. plus twenty to be able to do more than two damage and really do damage and yeah, get no my armor. Sense. It's like, yeah. Okay. Next up ghost trick is launching on June 30th. So uh, the original ghost trick was a DS title from the creator of Capcom's ACE attorney franchise, Shu Takumi. The game stars uh Sissel, a dead detective who can possess and trick real world objects to save people from their own demise. The remaster features updated graphics, a better frame rate, and new challenge feature. Now, plus all 37 songs from the uh, soundtrack have newly arranged versions uh, from the composer of the great Ace Attorney soundtrack. So, yeah. What would you guys think of this one? I, I had never heard of this franchise. This was shown at the, the Direct, I think, was it? The Nintendo uh, yeah, I think briefly, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. I think I was surprised it's coming to Xbox also, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah, he keeps supporting. He'll do. I think the only one that here that wasn't was still the the Metroid, sorry, not Metroid, Mega Man Legacy Collection Network, Mega Man Network. Legacy. Yeah, we're we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah Battle Network know. Collection. <laughs> Too many words in that name. Yeah, <laughs> it's still not on Xbox for some reason. But everything <laughs> else. But this is like you're gonna put this game. This is gonna. They think this will sell better on Xbox than a Mega Man. Game. Okay. Okay, um, Mega Man's not that big for Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm being what are you smoking, Burley? <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're using too much spiritual opium, my friend. Yeah, I was going to say, I never <laughs> smoke anything. Just drinking some pure, good old spiritual opium. It clears your mind, kids. And makes you believe Sony is right. Okay, okay, okay. Enough of that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the PSP got one of my favorite Mega Man games. Hey, do you know it's not Mega Man in in Japan? It's Rock. Do you know Rock do, Man? it's called yeah, Rock Man. Yeah. Rock and roll. And roll. That's right. <laughs> Proto Man. Um, roll, Mega Man powered up. Do you guys ever play that one on PSP? Uh, I played. Oh yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Fantastic. See, I'm not. Much, I'm not as much of the classic. I I I, I had <laughs> Maverick Hunter X. Yeah. Some more of the X yeah. series. Yeah, I never liked the X games. I was like big into Metroid one, two, and three as a kid. Uh huh. And then four, I was like, all right, here we go. This is just more of the same. Like I just didn't really care anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mega Man Powered Up was. I was so disappointed that they did not do Mega Man Powered Up two and three because hmm. it was right there. I don't know why. 
Atkins or Atkins just Atkins. release it on other platforms so it's not just on the PSP. Yeah, that game yeah. in Mega Man Legends One and Two were sort of like trapped in the past, and those are some of my favorite Mega Man games. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But Ghost Trick's coming back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yep. everyone's favorite franchise. That's Ghost right. Trip. Hey, I'll be I'll be interested to tr- check this out and try it out eventually. It's just because yeah. what it said it's coming in June. Yeah, yeah. Ju- June thirtieth. Uh, I got Final Fantasy sixteen coming out a couple days prior. <laughs> Final Fantasy <laughs> yeah. sixteen is taking priority in June. No, yeah, you, okay. I'm gonna. Can I? How can I pay to make you stream Ghost Trick instead of Final Fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, that gonna she, cost me? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, t- talk to my uh, my manager, Crumletta. She'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your manager. Come on. Yeah. This is a 2010 game from Japan, or, or 2011 originally. Ghost yeah. Trick. Yeah. And worldwide. Oh yep. God, it's so old. Here we go. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection adds new content. We got, uh, of course, a new trailer for Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. It's coming April 14th. Uh, this collection will include uh, 499 patch card, 499 patch cards that were previously exclusively available in Japan as physical collect- collectibles. Now all players will be able to use these cards in battle from Battle Network 4 and onwards. The developers also introduced Mega Buster Mode, which amplifies your attack power by 100 to allow players to get through battles faster. Oh Ooh, God! And they mode. do they, they they do need that on some of the later games. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just like it. The amount you have to really do with the Navi Custer and all, like really check your chips and all that. Mm-hmm. It, it is nice to see they're doing all this, but it's just still this is a collection. If I'm gonna buy it, I'm waiting for it to heavily go on sale because mm-hmm. I know how much like. Yeah, these are RPG. They're all RPGs and they're long games, and like you're getting all the different versions of the games, which is nice. Yeah, but it's like I don't need an like I don't need this right away. Mm-hmm. But it is nice to see them giving the content that Japan got that we didn't get. Yeah, Buster here in the north. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I had to guess, like <laughs> I don't, I don't think this game is gonna do very well, and this collection, and that's probably why it's not on Xbox. So like, it's like, like we're not gonna push in any units, no matter where we put it. So like, we're just gonna... I think it's, well, it feels is... like a preservation effort more than anything. Well, this is just keep it go- going down the line because they keep every like year or two they're giving another collection for our yeah, sub series. Right. Yeah, but I they, mean, they... it's like retro classics, man. Yeah. Yeah. That like I, I'm proud. Uh, it's nice to see them putting out another collection. This is just one of the ones that is the more niche one, because now now all that we have left, if we haven't done. They haven't done Star Force and the Legends. Oh yeah. And people mm-hmm. people are wondering when when are we going to get those? Yeah. Yeah. What about that other uh, Mega Man? Uh, well, there's only one of them. That that was a turn based RPG. Uh, What's the name of it? It's like a well, PS2 one, game. Well, one thing I do want to say is that you know the language rendering and everything takes time for these games too. So, uh, oh yeah, there's yeah. a lot of dialogue. Yeah. So I mean, uh, that's one of the reasons why it takes so long to get out to the West. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Command mission. Mega Man X Command mission. Oh, that one. That one. That. that one's not a bad turn-based RPG, but. Here's the thing, like, that, but the, there there are certain games, like, because they've done these collections, they just haven't included them. Because there was that, there's a like Mega Man Soccer, uh, Mega Man <laughs> no, Base, yeah, Mega Man Base, uh, Mega Man Ride Chase. Like, there's just some of these, and the two uh, Power Fighter games that were arcade cabinets, they uh-huh. put those on the original uh, Mega Man. Uh, legacy collection, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Mega Man collection back on the PS2, Xbox, GameCube era. Power battles, or something. Yeah. yeah, they ne- they never put them on the the legacy collections they sold. It's 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 a weird thing because we have like this l- weird leftovers, and it's like for Legends, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna do one and two, or are you not? Or, or will you include Misadventures of Tron Bond? Yeah. You should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or you can you can play the offshoot Mighty Number no. Nine. 
<laughs> probably, no, probably no. not a good idea. I, I streamed not that a game. Good idea. No, not a good idea. No, no. even with pe- bug yeah. fixes and patches, yeah. that game is still. No, it's it's not not a real Mega Man game, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, the, what's the Mega Man creator's name? Kenji Inafune. Inafune, right? Yeah, Inafune. I was following him on another like Inafune Kickstarter song. type project. Yeah, a while back that never succeeded was he was trying to make like a Mega Man Legends sort of oh like successor. Red Bash or something like that. Red yeah. something, yeah, I forget the yeah. name of it. And at one point they're like, "We got funding from a Chinese company. We're gonna do it," and it just never existed. They never happened. Yeah, and so. uh, yeah, that's. All right, so uh, we we also at the Capcom Spotlight, and uh, I don't have any video footage or anything of this, but we got the Resident Evil Death Island movie that uh, they added Jill Valentine to, as well as uh, Street Fighter Six is introducing a new commentator, uh, Takahashi Hikaru. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we, we got those announcements as well uh, during the uh, Capcom Spotlight event. So, yeah, so uh, interesting stuff there. Yeah. Okay, it's time to move on, guys. Time for the topic of the show. So, like I said earlier in the show, I'm wearing my Xbox hat today because, of course, our topic of the show is Xbox related. Xbox Bethesda. Obviously, we got our release date for uh, Starfield, and uh, you know, some people are a little disappointed that it's being delayed and all, but. Uh, I mean, it's only a few months off from supposedly what the release window was. Uh, but uh, yeah, Bethesda, uh, they had their uh, announcement. So, uh, and what's interesting about this is that they're going to have a Starfield Direct, which is going to be the same day as the Xbox Game Showcase on uh, June 11th. Yeah. Which that that's that's pretty cool. So I mean, it's it's basically their E three combined together. So uh, yeah. So uh, of course, uh, the story from IGN, uh, Bethesda has delayed Starfield once again. But as the game uh, is launching in September, it's going to launch for PC and Xbox Series X and S. And there's also going to be a Starfield Direct on June eleventh, right after the Xbox Game Showcase. In a new official launch date announcement trailer, which we are, uh, which we just showed here, uh, Todd Howard confirmed that the highly anticipated game will release this year. "Quote: We have poured ourselves into this game, and even I'm surprised how much we can pour. It is large. We're playing the game all the time." In quote, he explained. So it goes on to the Starfield Direct in June will provide a deep dive into the game. As Howard continued, quote, there's so much that we still have to show you. The game has many of the hallmarks that you'd expect from us, but it's also a very unique experience, end quote. So, uh, yeah. My question to you guys as we move on here, talking about the topic of the show. So he says that there's so much in this game and there's still so much they haven't shown you yet. I mean, this game must be so large in scope and I know Burley has reiterated to me over and over again about Bethesda games being so buggy at launch and them giving this a new release date of September that gives them six months from now to get things ready. Do you really think that this game is going to be that successful at launch without the the stories of all the bugs and everything from previous Bethesda titles. Your thoughts, Carl? I'll start with you. Uh, I mean, I, it's absolutely going to be successful, I and mean, I don't think the the bug stories are really going to matter, and I don't think they're going to be there for this game. Uh, they they gave this game an extra ten months since you know the original release date. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's plenty of time, I'd say. And I, I'm, I would probably assume that the reason they did that was because they wanted to make sure this game is as close to perfect as possible because this is this is their big play right now, right? It's for Xbox. Uh, this is the biggest thing they have. It's the biggest thing probably they're going to have for a long time. Um, not that they don't have other pop, you know, big, great looking games coming from first party, but this is the next Bethesda RPG. This is a new IP from them. Yeah. 
These games are massive. Uh, this has to this has to hit, and they they do not want the story to be like, oh, it's a bugging mess at launch. Like they want the, they want the story to be, wow, this game is incredible. No. Yeah, as I said before, this is like this is like uh, uh, No Man's Sky on steroids. <laughs> I mean, I I I hate to hear that because I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Man, no Man's Sky is not at all remotely close to a Bethesda RPG, so. Well, yeah, 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 but I mean the the premise. I mean, uh, of this, you know, the you're in space and you're exploring, and you can go into millions of different planet planetary systems and planets and things like that. So, in that sense, right? But yeah. but I feel that if you if you're someone if someone is like, oh yeah, it's something like No Man's Sky, and you go to play this, and you've only played No Man's Sky and none oh, of the yeah, other yeah, yeah, games, yeah. you'd be like, what the yeah. hell is this game? Right? Like, yeah. Because yeah. it's gonna be like. There's going to be vast like cities, you know, yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. tons of NPCs, and right. it's going to be all these quests. It's going to be like dungeons. well, that's why that's why it's you like know. on steroids. I mean, it's like it's a much yeah. much bigger game in scope and in mass and everything. So yeah, it's going to be like dialogue options. And, yeah, know, um, skill trees. And I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't think no man's guys they have upgrades and stuff. But. Yeah, Burley, what are your thoughts on all of this? I, I, is it going to be a buggy? Is it going to be a buggy mess at launch? Oh, there's, 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 there's going to be bugs. Every game has bugs. Let, let's, let's be right. honest. But mm -hmm. like Bethesda has shown that they keep delaying this, that they are really caring about this, how this is coming out, which is really giving me a lot of respect and a lot of confidence. Yeah, you're going to have some graphical bugs and stuff like that, and you know all these news publications mm -hmm. as they're going to be praising the game, but they're going to be running stories and be like. How did this compare against Skyrim's launch? Oblivion's launch? Ah, okay. oh, they still had this kind of bug. They had that kind of bug. You're going to get that, yeah. those new cycle stories running for the first couple weeks of this game coming out. Mm -hmm. But I think this game is going to be, I think it'll have a good amount of polish to it because they kept, they've kept delaying and they, they know they want to get this when it comes out ready. And everything we've seen from the game looks so good. So I have really high hopes on that. Yeah. Yeah. What what type of element of this game are you looking forward to the most? I mean, the combat elements like we're seeing a little bit of here, uh, or the, the the RPG elements, the uh the customization elements of this game, uh, the dialogues, uh the dialogue choices and the and you know the the way the story goes. I mean, what are you guys looking forward to the most? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the interesting quest designs that they have had in past games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Skyrim has some great quest lines in it. Oblivion did as well. Fallout 4 is the one where I think people criticize a bit more because some of it wasn't as good. Yeah. Um, I still really enjoyed that game. There was a lot of good stuff in it. Um, I love building aspects. I love, I love you know, character creation and i love character um what's the word i'm looking for um sort of like i like i like to like design make my character work a specific way like like you can make a a build right like in in skyrim like you can build your character to function in a specific way okay. using a specific type of gear and specific type of traits and feats or whatever they called it in that game mm -hmm. and leveling up certain stats and you have a, a build for your character that you play a certain style. And I'll, I'll, when I play those games, I usually play more than one character. And I play those characters differently. I focus on a different set of skills or abilities or weapons. And uh, in you know Skyrim specifically in Oblivion, I remember very much like I will play and I will only do certain quests for with, with a certain character. Because like mm -hmm. this character is the fighter guy. So he's going to do the fighter guild stuff and he might do some other stuff. He's not going to do like the magic stuff. You know, because that's mm. not his thing. You know, even though I know you can do it all, but like I'm role playing the character a specific way, and I, I love that about these games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, so like for me, oh. certain personality traits and all as well. Go ahead, Burley. Yeah, I was gonna say like I, I'm the same way, kind of Carl, with uh, doing having the different characters in like Oblivion. For me, I had like I had like so many different characters, and like cause some of them, like some of the quests will play out quite different with your options. So I yeah. would have a character or save scumming and going and seeing the different ways the quest will go 
my with what options I pick. Uh, for me, I'm really wanting to see what they're going to do for the story here and how 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 are they going to handle exploration? Are they going to be at like, okay, you now got your ship within the first hour. Can I go anywhere? Or am I going to be like, okay, you're locked to this, this galaxy right now of seven or eight planets, but as you get better gear uh, stuff for your ship, you can explore more how they're going to handle all that. Boy, those communication dialogues are really remind me of Obsidian with uh, the Outer Worlds. I mean, they do. <laughs> well, yeah, Outer Worlds. Yeah. I mean, this has a lot of that feel. Yeah, it's space, yeah. space themed as well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I do. I want also, like you're saying, with exploration and space travel, I want there to feel like there's a, a reason to just travel the galaxy, just just for fun. You know, yes. weird things like yeah. there's a game. Uh, I don't know if you know the Wing Commander series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a game called Wing Commander Privateer, which was a spinoff in the franchise. And Privateer was about you're like, you're like a, a you run goods across the galaxy, basically. And there was a story that was going on that you can get into. But you could just go around and like upgrade your ship, add different weapons, get bigger ships so you can hold more cargo, go to different ports in different space areas. And, and space, sorry, uh, galaxies or whatever, and um, sell your goods for different prices depending on like their value in different areas of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And like, I would love to have that sort of aspect in this as well. Hmm. Diplomat, there you go, Carl. You'll be a diplomat. <laughs> diplomat. Hey, look, I, I, if you play yeah. um, Outer Worlds, oh yeah, yeah, there's, you're. you're there's, there's, that's all you are build. is a diplomat basically well if you play that build it's it's actually really satisfying and fun like uh, the sort of yeah the diplomat the the uh all the dialogue options if you're good at yeah. all that stuff yeah. you can even build that a character that um make you're not that strong but you make your allies stronger yeah yeah you know? so you're not relying yeah. so much on on you doing the damage you're commanding your people and you're buffing them yeah, and I mean, the that, art of persuasion. Awesome. Yeah, and the art of yeah, persuasion. That's stuff's awesome. And then this game's yeah. gonna have allies. We know that already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we haven't seen any of that. My, I guess well, we my, saw, my we, we saw the one ally, the still image of the robot. Yes. Oh, I guess what I meant is we haven't seen it like in the gameplay how that works. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I, I really want to know, I like the base building. Like I'm gonna spend so much time building bases, building my ship. Yeah. But the one yeah. question I really have is, what's the unique element of the combat? Because hmm. you have, you know, Fallout's got the VAT system, and I love the VATS thing. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and there's other aspects to that game. but And Skyrim yeah. or, or Elder Scrolls has, you know, magic, really. Uh, sword and sorcery stuff is that. That's, you know, the melee stuff is is more robust in that than it is in, you know, let's say, Fallout games. So, like, what's oh, yeah. this what's this special combat feature going to be? I don't think we have the answer yet. Yeah. And I'll, possibly guess, they'll talk about that on June 11th. I, I, I feel like they'll talk about everything. I feel like that that <laughs> showcase is going to be like two like hours 40, long, probably. Maybe not that long. Maybe 40 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> Who long, knows, man? I, that'll be great. I, I, will, I will watch 40 minutes of, of Todd Howard explaining this game. Well, maybe the three of us, we can uh, we can watch that show together. That would be really cool coming up on June 11th. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So excited for this game, man. I, oh, yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah. You know, I'm mildly disappointed about, about it being delayed. Obviously, yes, technically yeah. delayed because they said everything in the showcase is within 12 months. And yeah, that to yeah, me yeah. Was, was the mistake of saying that. I don't think you should have ever said that, but yeah, I feel like they put themselves in sort of a, between a rock and a hard place. And they, they did that because kind of like, kind of like Halo Infinite. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like they weren't. No, no, not really. I, they weren't ready to show <laughs> no. things beyond. Yeah, like yeah, a certain yeah. a certain range. So, like, yeah. you know, Hellblade Two and Avowed and you know, State of Decay Three and Perfect Dark and every other announced game that that Xbox <laughs> put out there, but we haven't seen in a long time. They weren't. They're obviously not ready to show those. So they had to set that expectation of like, hey, guess what? You're not going to see those here. Yeah. And then it hamstrung them into having to put these games into a specific time frame that they might not hit. Yeah. And there you go. That's where we are today. But this, that's the reason they put no date on it. They delayed Starfield. They delayed probably Forza Motorsport now. Uh, and they put no dates on them because they're like, look, we're, we're just not going to tell you right now because we're going to wait until we have our date. And 
Yeah, they do for this one. And probably moving forward, they're going to do the same thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Unless I got pushed, you know, like if Forza got pushed out of 2023, which it's not going to, then they would have to say something because they, they put out a graphic that says 2023. I, th I think no matter what they would have said for Starfield, if they wouldn't have given a date or, or, or like they did give one, they're, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Because the mm -hmm. audience has been craving this game and going, uh, some 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 wavelengths of the audience have gone a little too overboard, uh, to be honest. But it's just yeah. like, no matter what you say, it's it, it was going to be bad. But I, I I still give them a lot of respects for just no, we're not going to go for that date we said originally. We have right. to push back. But in right. June, we'll show you a lot more, and I'm sure it's going to be they're going to have a lot to show. And it's going to be a huge thing of their presentation. Just show a lot of stuff on Starfield we haven't seen to yeah. be really get us hyped up for September. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if Microsoft didn't buy Bethesda, I feel like this game would have been out on 11 11 22. And it maybe would have been very buggy. Yeah. yeah. It would have been, it would have been great. I'm sure it would probably be the same great game, but it would have had a ton of problems. Yeah, and, I, and like Microsoft, Microsoft has learned Good that point. lesson now, like that you have to, you have to take that hit. You have to take that. You have to just delay your games, like because Halo Infinite didn't work out, and they did take yeah. the hit, and they, they delayed it a year, and it still didn't work out. So like, yeah, well, to a certain extent, yeah, you know, but Halo Infinite season three is out now. People are liking that. So. Yeah, yeah, Burley's yeah. playing it. Burley's playing it every day. Yeah. Yeah, that game got deleted as soon as they said, Yeah, we're not going to do all this co op and all the stuff we sold to you, you know, on the back of the box <laughs> that we promised you. And we took our yeah. took your money because we wanted to go for live service. And they didn't we, take my money, we, yeah. No, they didn't, they didn't take my money, but people, <laughs> but, but people did buy it. They sold that game. Okay, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole again, <laughs> but you know what I mean, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Well, June eleventh is June eleventh is going to be big, guys. I mean See? that that showcase is going to be amazing, and I'm really looking forward to it. And you know, seeing what they show more of uh, Starfield and and uh, of all the other stuff that's coming down the pipeline. But yeah, June eleventh is going to be big, guys. So oh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna have so, to we're gonna have to have some special event for that. For sure, yeah. So, so the delays are a standard of the industry, and, and yeah. if you, if delays are going to piss you off, you should stop following the industry closely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just gonna it's gonna happen constantly. It's always been the way it was, and it's worse now because games are more complicated and complex yeah. than ever before. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, how long have they been developing Starfield now? For years. Yeah. So and, and yeah, we it's like that know. with a lot so of like games a, now. it's yeah. a very 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 long time. And, you know, and probably they're still developing and working on it. I mean, even after the game is released, they're probably going to continue for years to uh, put more content into well, it. Well, they'll also. put out yeah. expansions, right? Yeah. And, and there's so, and there's you know there's heavy heavy mod support for that. It's going to be exactly as well. So yeah, right. the game's going to be a monster. Like if yes, yeah, there's a, there's a huge chance that that game is you know. 10 years from now it is something people still play. You know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's yeah. why you can't just get like, just like Skyrim. You know, it's like people are exactly. still playing. Yeah. Skyrim, yeah. Oblivion, yeah. Morrowind, like I mean, Fallout, the Fallout 3. games. People yeah. play those yeah. games. Yeah. Four, yeah. Fallout 4. I mean, they're re releasing that. And Fallout 4 is yep. got a lot of great stuff in it. You know? Yep. All right, guys. So that was our topic of the show. So uh, let us know uh, in the comments or in the chat what you think, uh, you know, and uh, what you're looking forward to uh, when you come uh, to play Starfield uh, this coming September. So, yeah, let us know uh, in the comments as well. So, all right. How long do you think you're going to play that? Yeah. How long? You start how playing long? it yeah. like on se September 6th. I feel like I'll be playing that like into december probably at this time next year probably well, well, <laughs> oh, it, 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 it all depends when spider-man 2 comes because as much as i love yeah, Star, really, starfield yeah. Sp yeah. spider-man 2 yeah. is a day day one they are oh, yeah, that, i'm a huge insomniac fan and me i love too. what they did with the two spider-man games so as soon as it comes out it's like here's my money yeah, how, how, like do, how do i out. give it to you yeah. 
Put that <laughs> Monopoly money down, Burley. Come on. Jesus Christ. At least you got the 500s. <laughs> That's the good ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll be playing Spider Man 2 day one, too. But but yeah, I, I could see myself putting hundreds of hours into Starfield. I'm, I'm really oh, yeah. excited for it. So, yeah. all I mean, right. If, it's if time. I had a PS5 at that point, I probably would. Like, if, if Starfield comes out first and I'm still playing Starfield and Spider Man comes out, I'm probably not going to get Spider Man. Just because. Like, I know what it is. I know what to expect. If I'm, like, deep into yeah. and loving Starfield, like, I'm just going to keep playing that. Like, I don't then why to... get a PS5, can... Carl? Well, that's when I might not get it until later. <laughs> like, eventually, when I have, like, the right timing, it's like, I specifically want During the, the right I... timing. Like, a, <laughs> a year wait. before the PS6 comes out, right? Because yeah. I can wait for Spider-Man 2, and it'll be on sale. Yeah. So, like, if I don't... If I'm not planning to play it at launch, why not just wait and buy it cheaper? Yeah, we'll see, but... Uh... Yeah. All right. So it's time to move on. So it's time to talk about the uh, new game releases for the week of uh, March 13th through the 19th. And uh, this week, Burley, you are up first. What do you have for us? Uh, I have for you guys Bayonetta Origins, Kreza and the Lost Demon. Long before this trainee of the dark arts would come to be called Bayonetta, she took a fateful journey into a forbidden Avalon forest. Alongside her was Cheshire, her very first demon, possessing Kreza's stuffed toy. Playing as both Kreza and Cheshire and searched through the, the treacherous forest to look for the power to save Kreza's mother. It is coming Friday, March 17th to only the Nintendo Switch. Mm. I, I really do like the art style on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but is it in, similar in any way to the the regular Bayonetta games? I don't, I, I don't think so because like, <laughs> it's the the demon is the one doing the attack. Mm -hmm. The the stuffed toy. Does she do anything? It looks. I don't know. Watch. I'm waiting to see if she yeah. attacks. No, she does. Uh, no, they said she can. She's like, like stu stunning. Oh, there you go. Yeah, holding, up, holding yeah, she's stunned like that. Mm. It reminds me of Okami, although I, I think Okami's art style was a little different, but. Some similarities, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of platforming elements, too. Oh, it looks like. I'm yeah. curious to see how this does. Um, Review-wise, yeah. I think sales-wise, I think it's going to be poor because it's it's like a full-price game. I don't I don't know how you can sell this type of game at, at full price. It, it's an, yeah, it looks we, like an we indie. We'll see. looks like a really cool indie. <laughs> you know, None of those are full-price games. Yeah. All right, so I'm up next, and obviously at the beginning of the show, showed a little bit of a, of course, a clip of Diablo 4. So, of course, the Diablo 4 beta is coming out. So uh, the open beta and early access weekends for Diablo 4 feature the game's prologue and the entirety of Act 1. Characters will be capped at level 25, but you're welcome to continue ripping through demons until the open beta ends. Uh, which ends on the 19th. Early access is available to those who pre-purchase the game for PC or console or via social media giveaways. So, yes, starts on the 17th. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's cool. There's a, a lot of content, it seems, that they're giving you for this open beta. Yeah. It looks great, man. It really looks great. Oh, the game is going to be amazing, yeah. And I said, if I loved playing Reaper of Souls, so I, I mean, it's been a long time since I played it. It's been a while, so I'm looking forward to a new Diablo and uh, getting into it again. So, And if you don't want to pre-purchase the game uh, to get the beta, you can also, in the U.S., just buy it. I think it was the KFC Double Down Sandwich and get codes. Mm. They announced that partnership. Oh, I, should, I should do that. Yeah, It's a lot cheaper to buy the game because I'm waiting to see if this game just comes to Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling yeah. it will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it could. All right, Carl, you're up next. What do you got for us? I have Valheim coming to Xbox One and Xbox Series X on March 14th. Right. A brutal exploration and survival game for one to ten players set in a procedurally generated purgatory inspired by Viking culture. Battle, build, and conquer your way to a saga worthy of Odin's patronage. Yeah, and this is on Game Pass. And this is one of those, the, the actual PC version was already on Game Pass. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I wanted to try this a while ago, but then I, I, they announced it was coming to console and it was going to be on Game Pass. I was like, you know what? I'll just uh, I'll just wait for that because I prefer to play things on console. 
Um, I like survival games. I always like survival games is like one of those genres where like I I want to like really get into it, um, but most of them are like kind of janky and not all that great. No. But I keep I keep waiting to like is this this will be the one right? This will be the one that I love. You know, I, I mean like Minecraft is a survival game and I love that. Yeah. I try I try a lot of these survival games a little bit and dip into them and you know usually I don't stick around. If I had more time, I would you know probably play something like these a lot more. Yeah. But this one was a huge success when it came to PC, so excited to see the uh, console release. Yeah. Kind of we're in a, a renaissance period for uh, you know Viking era games, obviously oh, yeah. with uh, <laughs> you know with with uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and you know and all the other ones that have been coming out. So not just games. They had that uh, I forget that movie last year. It had like Willem Dafoe and it. Uh... One Viking film. I don't know. There's a lot of Viking theme stuff. Yeah. And yeah. It's a I, TV I, I, show. I, I, there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of movies. It's you know Thor. There's God of War. There's, I mean, it's it's every, there's some other other Viking themed games that was there's one that came to like PS Plus right. something right. I, I forgot the name of that one. Yeah. All right. So those have been our picks of the week for the week of uh, March 13th through the 19th. Of course, you can go to releases.com to check out all the games for the month of March, as well as uh, into the foreseeable future, uh, the games that have been already confirmed for release. So yeah, go there and check it out. So ne next up, uh, we're gonna be uh, talking about Game Pass. So Carl, this is your segment, take it away. What do we got for Game Pass coming up in, in, the, in the upcoming week and weeks? All right, available already today is Guilty Gear Strive. Mm -hmm. uh, the Arc System Works uh, fighting game. I really wanted to try this one. I just haven't gotten around to booting this up yet. Um, but I've always wanted to see one of these new ones in action on my, uh, you know, beautiful TV because these games look great. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, okay, you got Dead Space two and three, uh, which are already out now on cloud. Uh, these yeah. were already Ooh. on yeah. on Game Pass, but now you can play them via cloud, which is you know always something extra. Nice. March fourteenth, Valheim console remember yep. this is game preview technically so it's not it is still uh it's still in early, development early access yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of these games generally that's how they are so, like yeah. don't don't that's not out of the ordinary for a, a survival game yeah yeah sid meyer's uh, civilization six nice March 16th nice yeah yeah i've never played a sid game but I, you know it, it's something that i'm sure i would enjoy if i could put the time into it yeah, and then Nino oh, you need a lot, lot of time to play a Civ game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, For sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nino Kuni Two: Revenant Kingdom. Yay! Princess edition. Yay! Which is on March twenty first. Console and PC. No cloud yeah. on that one. Yeah, I wonder why. I feel like the cloud will come later on that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it includes all the DLCs on that. Good and then stuff. also wanted to note that Halo Infinite Season Three: Echoes Within is also available now. Yep. People are supposedly really enjoying that, saying that is finally a worthwhile season uh, for Halo Infinite. So, yeah, yeah. I want the two things I want to point out about this. I thought were weird is that like Nino Kuni Two and Guilty Gear Strive. Like these, these were announced at the Xbox event uh, TGS, right? The previous year, Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just thought it was weird that they like didn't tell us the dates like apparently i don't know maybe the dates were out there like somewhere but like they never really advertised like this is the date that these games are coming to xbox they just like waited and guilty gear strived like hey it's out today on game pass I'm like, all right <laughs> would have been might have been nice to know it was coming a little earlier and Ni nino kuni too again like all right at least at least we got a little bit advanced like because yeah. yes game pass is important but like you can buy these games on xbox also <laughs> yeah but what's my, really special my, about my this... games on Xbox? I, I I I don't know that that doesn't seem like something that's true. But I what's really? That up. But what's yeah, really? You know what? It is a foreign concept, really. You're right. But what's really uh, special about the Nino Cooney coming to Game Pass is it's got all the DLC with it. So yeah, that'll be good. Good stuff. It's always nice. Yes. Yes. I don't know if you guys have played the original Nino Cooney, but yeah, it's a classic. I, uh, yeah, it's, I, I have played, I got like oh. 10 hours in and then got myself whooped by a boss on that. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I really got to grind. 
Yeah, it was, and, it was a yeah. big, big seller out here in Japan. It was really, really good. I, I remember so, it was a good size seller, a uh, good seller over here. Yeah, yeah. I tried the when it came to Game Pass. I, I just kind of wasn't into the much of it, really. I mean, I thought like I like the the style of it was was cute, you know. And I appreciated it, but I didn't really get into the story it was telling, or the, and I didn't really yeah. like the combat. It was kind of weird. Yeah. All right, so those are the games uh, coming to Game Pass. So thanks for that, Carl. So uh, now it's time to talk about the games that we're going to be playing this upcoming week. I'm going to probably get back to the quarry a little bit, uh, try to play some of that. Uh, so uh, how about you, Burley? What are you going to play this coming week? Uh, some uh, Metroid Prime. Okay. No, you were, really you were playing some of that uh, last yeah, week, right? Metroid yeah, Prime. I played. I did one uh, session of that, uh-huh. and it... it it's interesting to go back to a game you've you played like 20 something years ago and you're like i do not remember jack Uh (laughs) so it's like you think about resident evil 4 like yeah i don't i see those trailers i'm like i i know i played this game i don't remember any of this oh like resident evil 4 i remember the memorable moments with the chainsaw and you know running from the boulder and stuff like that that uh, that stuff i could remember like metroid probably like I don't remember shit about this map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't either. And I played... there's there's a lot of games like that. I mean, you played so long ago, and you know they're being remastered or remade, and and it's like it's almost like a brand new game to you, you know, because uh, or either that or it brings you know the memories, you know, come back. But yeah, yeah that's, that's the cool stuff about playing video games, man. You know. Yep. So, yeah, Carl, how about you, man? What are you gonna be playing? I do want to try the RE4 demo, and I do plan to play Valheim a little bit. But Valheim, I also got to go finish up the story in uh, Hogwarts. So. Hogwarts, cool. Yeah. All right. So now I want to take a a, a minute uh, to give give a shout out. Um, of course, uh, this this person, uh, my my son. Uh, is turning 20 years old this coming week on the 14th. And uh, it was a lot of it was due to him for helping me to get back into video games again uh, after he was born and after he started growing up a little bit and started playing video games a lot. So, uh, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to him. Uh, and uh, it's it's been great, you know, uh, being able to spend any kind of time I can with him and, you uh, you know, being his father and all. So, uh, so I'm proud of him. And, uh, of course he's a university student now, but, uh, yeah, but I just want to give a shout out to my son. Uh, he's turning 20. So happy birthday. So, uh, if, if he watched this later <laughs> on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, there's a special shout out to you, man. So, uh, uh, and, uh, have, uh, some programming announcements now I, I want to talk about. Uh, so, uh, Myself, myself and uh, and Burley and Carl here on the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast. Obviously, from tomorrow, uh, we are shifting back to uh, daylight savings time, I guess, in the West. Out here in Japan, we don't turn our clocks forward or backwards or anything. But out in the West, you know, uh, daylight savings time is starting again. Uh, but next week, uh, we will be, because I, uh, I myself... Uh, have a lot of IRL things to do. Uh, so we're going to be uh, taking the week off. So there will be no podcast uh, and for Patreon, no post show on the 18th. So we will be coming back on the 25th uh, with episode 127, our next episode. But from episode 127 from uh, March 25th, we were we are going to be starting at a new time. So we're going to be starting at 10 a.m., Eastern Daylight Time and 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So once again, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time uh, will be the time we start uh, the podcast uh, live here on YouTube. Okay, so just want to let everybody know that. So the next episode will be in two weeks and it will start at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So, uh, yeah, I I just... uh, I talked to Burley and Carl and uh, wanted to make that change because I think that's a, a more reasonable time for a lot of you out there uh, in the West, especially in the Pacific and Eastern time zones uh, to be able to uh, come and uh, 
and join us for the conversation uh, each week on every episode. Uh, most uh, most of you will most likely be up by then. So uh, we decided to make that change. So uh, yeah, so our next episode, episode 127 on March 25th, we'll start at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So we hope you can join us for that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, next week, uh, yeah, uh, no podcast and probably a lot of uh, other content. We're going to be taking a week off because I have some IRL stuff to take care of next week. Uh, but we'll be back uh, from the week of the 20th with all of our other content as well. And uh, the next episode of the podcast on the 25th. Okay. So with that said, it's time to end the episode with our indie recording artist spotlight. So this week's spotlight is on Milano. Milano's goal is to make people feel uplifted through music. From upbeat electronic bangers to vibey lo-fi instrumentals, there is something in his palette for every mood. From the title song of his album called Throw a Fit. So this has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 126. So we hope to catch you in the next episode. So on uh, March 25th, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time live here on YouTube. Okay. So take care, everyone. Peace out. Bye, everyone.